Hey guys, James here with Waterford Business Solutions. And today I wanted to talk, to, go a little bit more into projects and everything within QuickBooks. And today specifically, we're gonna talk about adding income to a project. Um, we talked about previously setting up a project and what we need to do there. And I told you that there were gonna be several different videos that I do here. This video is gonna go over adding income. Then we're gonna do another video over adding expenses another video over um, hourly cost rate, and a final video over kind of what you can get out of projects once it's done correctly. So this is gonna be kind of the second video in the series. So this one is specifically about adding income. So we've got this project here, and we have no income associated with it. And we have no income associated with this project because we've got no transactions associated with it. Now the nice thing about this is that it's fairly easy to do. Coming up here to the plus new icon in QuickBooks, almost anything we do here under this customers tab will go ahead and link up to the project. More specifically, it will help affect our income. Now keep in mind like an estimate, that's gonna go ahead and it's not per se income, we're just sending something to the customer. A sales receipt that is gonna affect stuff, refund receipts, um, invoices, that stuff will affect it, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. But I want to start with an estimate because since I deal with home service professionals, we generally start with an estimate to the customer. So we're going to do an estimate here and we're going to choose our customer um, or choose our project here, sorry. Um, and this is going to go ahead and be this project right here. And this project for myself under Concrete Sciences, um, this is gonna be an HVAC install. So we're gonna be doing kind of an AC example here. Um, and we're gonna do a custom job here where we're installing a unit. We tell them about that unit. It's a 15 seer train HVAC unit, 10 year warranty, whatever you need to tell your customer on that estimate so that they feel comfortable. If you're an electrician, you're gonna say that this is an estimate for installing um, a light fixture and it's a chandelier in the dining room and yada, 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 or rewiring the house. Um, obviously, as I said in the previous video, we tend to want our projects to be bigger projects, not just something small. Um, so we're gonna come in here and we're going to put in anything and everything we need here. As I said, I'm gonna pretend like this is an HVAC, but if you're an electrician, this might be replacing a um, breaker panel or rewiring a house or wiring a house if it's a new build. Or it might be um, if you're a plumber redoing a bathroom, um, replacing a water main, some information like that. So we're gonna put in all this information here. Um, and for my AC install, we're gonna charge the customer $15,000. That's gonna be the labor, the unit, um, everything that we need to do there. Um, because they've just got a really big unit going on here. And so we'll put in everything here like we would with any estimate. We've got our email, billing address for the customer, the date of our estimate. I always recommend if you're sending estimates, send an expiration date so the customer knows that it's only good for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, however much. If we don't send that expiration date, a customer could come back two years later and say, hey, you gave me this estimate two years ago, I wanna go ahead and accept it. Now, logically, they would say, you would think that they would know that, hey, that's two years old, prices have changed, but it's better just to be very black and white, very straightforward. The more information you can put on any estimate, the better off you are in the long run. So we'll fill in all the information, exactly what unit we're getting, um, that we're maybe redoing some of the venting or some of the um, duct work in the house, um, anything and everything that we need to worry about there. So we'll go ahead and save that and send it to the customer. I don't wanna inundate myself by email, so I'm just gonna save. And what's gonna happen here is now when we come back to transactions, if I'm under the right project, sorry, we're gonna go ahead and see that estimate there in our projects. However, we still don't see any income. We don't see any income because an estimate doesn't count as income. You haven't billed anyone for anything. It is just going out there and saying, hey, if you want us to do this, 
it's going to be fifteen thousand dollars we haven't received any income we're not guaranteed any income the customer can absolutely deny it but let's say the customer comes back to us and goes ahead and says yes i want to go ahead and accept it so we come here and we accept the estimate and i always recommend with any and every um, client that when it is accepted we put in who it was accepted by and when it was accepted that way we have record of that if we don't have record of this information it could always come back and harm us later on so now we're going to save that well now it's accepted so if it's accepted it should go ahead and affect everything right that's still not the case again an estimate is just an estimate you haven't actually built anyone for anything it's still out there until we turn that estimate into an invoice it's not going to affect your income on any project so then we're going to come to this estimate and we're going to actually create an invoice now now we're going to charge them 50 percent deposit up front so we're going to create that invoice there and it'll copy everything over for us like we normally have happen um, we might need to make some modifications or stuff like that but we're just going to go ahead and copy everything over and then we're going to go ahead and save it and send it to the customer now that we saved and sent it we now see this invoice here with this invoice here we should see income up here but as you notice there's still no income the reason for that is we have to refresh the entire system so if we just refresh the page now we will see our income pop up so it's that simple to add income now obviously if um you have you don't need to send an estimate you can skip the estimate step and just send an invoice it's up to you kind of how you want to um, do that but i wanted to kind of go through the entire thing here from there we now have our income and we see that but i want to hit a few other things here um i want to hit a sales receipt real quick so let's say that a customer comes to us on a project and wants to buy something specific from us so they want to go ahead and we're going to say they want to buy an AC filter. Um, and they're just buying one AC filter at $20. We'll do everything there, taxes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, will be added together. We'll save that. And now that invoice has, or this sales receipt has gone off. Now remember, a sales receipt is going to be basically they are paying you at the time that you're sending that an invoice is you are sending it to them and they need to pay you for it but a sales receipt is still income so we'll see this sales receipt come up here for 2140 and when we take a look at that we now see that our income has increased by twenty dollars now it's only increased by twenty dollars because one dollar and forty cents of that sales receipt was actually taxes so it's not calculating that into our income at all which is very very good and helps keep everything more on track now let's say um, the customer comes back to us and um, we're going to receive payment on this mark that out we go ahead and finish everything off here we send them their final invoice then we receive payment on that Again, when you receive payment, that first one I didn't do a good job on, um, but you need to come up here and you need to choose what your payment method is. They give us a check, put in that check number of what they gave us. That way we can go ahead and if it ever becomes a question, we can find by that check number. We can see how they paid. We have all that information. Um, and always deposit to undeposited funds. I've talked about that previously, but that's really important is always deposit to undeposited funds. So we're going to go ahead and save and close that. So now we've got um, two invoices in here, two payments, everything like that. Um, and we've got this lovely high profit margin. If only all of our jobs could be like that. And we see that we've got $15,020 in income. But let's say something happens somewhere along the lines um, after they've paid us and we need to send a refund receipt. So we can come here and do a refund receipt. And again, just like the invoice, just like the estimate, everything like that, we're going to come and we're going to choose the project, not the customer, because this refund is specifically related to the project. And when you refund, it's going to affect your profit on that project. So we're going to choose that 
choose our custom services, and we're going to end up refunding them $500. There's no tax on that, so we don't want to have that being affected to us there. We're going to go ahead and save and close that. And I forgot, with the refund receipt, um, you're going to need to choose how you're refunding it, whether it's by credit card, whether it's by check, cash, however you're doing it, and then choose where you're refunding um, everything from. And if you're refunding by check, go ahead and put in your check number here. Um, QuickBooks will do most of that automatically, as long as you are using QuickBooks the way it needs to be used. So we'll go ahead and save and close that. And now it doesn't like my transaction number. Let's try. Is it the transaction number or is it the check number? There we go. It was my check number. So now when we come back here, we see instead of $15,020, we see $14,520 because we refunded $500. And we will see that refund pop up right there. So again, any type of income, anything under this customer column, whether it be invoice, payment, estimate, sales receipt, refund receipt, any of those, when you are choosing your customer to do it and just assign it to a project, all you have to do is select that project. If you do not select that project, then what's going to happen is it's not going to associate with the project. It is just going to associate with the customer and you're not going to show the information under the project. So it's very important to select the project as your customer. That way we are seeing all of the income. So that's kind of a crash course on how to record income into a project. Um, expenses are very similar, but we're going to go over that in a different video. That way we aren't sitting here forever talking about this. As always, guys, if y'all have questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, and we'll be happy to help you out.